<laughs> so Joan and I were just talking about who's touching the blue button to go live because as you know, I am not allowed. I am just not allowed to touch anything because I will end things. I will start things. <laughs> oh my heck. How's everyone doing? Sherry and Maria and Bonnie are already going at it, talking, saying hello, how you doing? Oh, spunky. I like that. I like that. That is super cute. Love, love from Virginia. I don't know if, um, let's see, is Virginia cold right now? I know parts of the country are just like definitely having a little more fun with their winter than, uh, than they would like. So and there's Joan saying, hey, so we're streaming right now to Facebook and to the YouTube channel. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm Juliana Jules Avalar, the inventor of the Jewel Loom. Hey, Stephanie. And um, this month, uh, I really felt like, you know what? It's the month of love. And what do I truly love? But my original invention, my beautiful baby blue jewel loom um, that really started all of this excitement um, in the weaving world. And so I really wanted to take it every Thursday and, um, and focus on that. Thank you, Bonnie. So Bonnie just said beautiful necklace jewels. So this, this is my power piece. And um, this is the last piece I made on an airplane before 9-11. So prior to that, uh, I used to take all of my things, my jewel loom and all of my, you know, cutting utensils and what have you. And I would bead, um, because I was traveling all over the country. Um, and so, and so, yeah, so this is my last, my last one that I made on an airplane and I refer to it as my power piece. It's the one I put on when I really need to remind myself that, I got this, that I'm good, that I'm enough, I'm worthy, and all the other noise can just like take a hike, right? So all of you all should have a power piece. If you don't have one, I would highly encourage you to start dreaming and um, and to make that. So hi, Nissa. I hope I'm enunciating that correctly. It's so hard when we're like um, on the board here. So just seeing everyone's name. I'm so grateful that you showed up. So again, um, I'm the, I'm the baby mama of the jewel loom, the inventor of the jewel loom. And this is the jewel loom right here that we're talking about. Um, it came out in, uh, let's see, it started to birth in 2012. And then I believe it was, uh, late January, February of 2020, 13, when we introduced it at the craft and hobby show, which, um, it, it won the, uh, an innovations award there. And so, from there so what like it's you know it's been like this 10 year journey of getting the loom made getting the u.s patent y'all i have a patent like i have to remind myself like how incredibly awesome that is because i never talk about it enough and it's pretty stinking cool to have a u.s patent um somebody said to me do you realize that you'll always be a part of history and i was like no i don't <laughs> It didn't even dawn on me like, you're right. Oh my God, that's like so stinking cool. So yeah, so my my patent number, oh heck, I can't see it in the dark. I should know it by heart. Sometimes I do remember, what is it? Six, seven, six, seven, six, eight, seven, nine. If I ever get a tattoo, because I'm afraid, <laughs> that's probably the one thing I would have tattooed. So, um, but yeah, so anyway. I tried to warp it just now. Oh, this is so exciting. So I love it. So a lot of you have been working with the Jewel Loom for many, many years. Um, one of the first places that I introduced it was Jewelry Television. So right after it came out at the uh, Craft and Hobby Asso Association show, um, we went to Jewelry Television and they were the first to have it on air. And so it was so stinking cool. Um, and a lot of you got the original jewel looms that came out. So pretty nice. Okay. I'm just like, it's moving very quickly here. And I just see you all. I see you all. 
Yes. And Sarah, you are so right. Okay. So let's break it down. I want you to get out um, some, you know, you might want to take notes. It's a possibility. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once again, break down the loom, put the rod in there. Okay. Because it's really important. Talk about how it's flexible, not bendable. I want to show you some of the looms that have been literally in their work position for 10 years, and I'm not exaggerating, and talk about the things that we can use. Sarah, you definitely have a point about um, adding other options other than buttons. I've been a little button crazy, and so um, I'll respect to that, and I definitely want to show that. So next Thursday, we will warp the loom with hemp. I'm going to use a one millimeter hemp black. Um, and then we're going to start making our love cuff. Now the original love cuff was five across. Um, and this time I'm going to go three across just so that we can actually get it finished in a timely manner. And so that's what we'll be doing. I've got one strand strand of every size am six millimeter fire polish, um, that I have in the shop. And so we'll do that next Thursday. The following Thursday, we're going to take it off. Sorry, Sarah, we are going to add a button to that. But then in addition to your request, I've also gotten some more. So I figure that last Thursday, what we really need to do is talk about the different options. Um, one of the first, you know, way back in the day when I first started doing all of this, all right, we did um, the weaving on the leads, creative living, and we sewed on the button. Um and so I did that forever in a day, like, like how you're probably thinking, Jules, you're like button crazy. Like, you know how we just do this right now. I get it. I hear you. I know. I'm totally no. Um, but prior to that, it was all about this. It was sewing on a boxed, um, you know, uh, oh gosh, where'd my words just go? The boxed ending there. So it's got like the three holes. So that's, you know, uh, that's definitely one way to do it. Danielle's got a super cool way to do it. You know what? I should ask Danielle to come on at that last Thursday and, and uh, we can have some fun with her technique. But one of the things that you can do, if you haven't done already, if you want, um, I, this is my book, Jewel Loom Inspirations. It is delish, super delicious. All right. It's got step-by-step -step on how to sew on those clasps. I don't carry my book. I know, weird. But the reason being is that I can't compete with Amazon's free shipping on a book. And shipping a book is a little more fun than humans are allowed to have <laughs> when it comes to packaging and rates. And so, you know, Amazon carries it and and I just can't, I can't, uh, and it's cool, totally cool that, that Amazon carries it and they can sell it and you can buy it from them. Thank you, Paula. Paula says she loves my book. And uh, and so, yeah. Does that involve fringes? Teach the classes. I, I don't know what that means. Um, and Bonnie says she got one too. So sewing on the clasp is, let's see. I think it's at the beginning. Oh, yeah. So... Well, this must be it. So here's here's the illustrations for sewing on the clasp in the book. So if you haven't picked up that copy, I would go to Amazon. I would pick up your copy. You could look for giggles on beetleon.com because I do know at one time they did carry it, but I don't know that they do anymore. So um, Amazon's got the free shipping and you know, you could check it out there. If you were lucky enough back in the day to be watching me on Aline's Creative Living, I don't know if these bring any memories, but these were the books that the um, that Tiffany Windsor and I did together when we were on the Aline's Creative Living television show. And we were doing all of the amazing bracelets and all of that good stuff. Yes, Sarah, it's a great sort, you know, great. And you'll be like highlighting and you'll be putting all your little stickies throughout the book. So... Okay. Um, let's, I want to talk about the loom, the jewel loom, the original jewel loom. Okay. Is made out of plastic. The plastic is flexible. 
it is not bendable. All right. So you shouldn't be trying to fold it in half. <laughs> you know, it's flexible. It's on it's and it's super duper, super duper, super duper light. Like I don't even know the ounces, but like a couple, right? Like what? Maybe one, maybe an ounce and it's plastic. And so when you put it on your surface, it's going to wiggle. It's not wood. It's plastic. It's shiny. It has a shiny tush and it's going to wiggle. So you definitely want to work on a surface. Um, we've talked about this in the past, you know, like your bead mat, um, even, you know, what's the stuff called that you put in your cupboards? Obviously I don't do that very often. Um, oh heck, Joan, help me out here. So you can <laughs> use any type of a, like a non slip grid to actually put your jewel loom on so that it doesn't, um, you know, wiggle around like it's mama. And, uh, and so she's probably going to come up with it. She's like, it's a, this it's, what is it called? I love that purple hat on the black band. Oh, you know what? That is so, you're right. That is so stinking cool. You know what? What did we make that out of? So that wasn't, that was just a prop. I'll have to ask Tiffany because I can't quite tell what, what those beads are. I don't know if they were bugles, but that would be hot. Oh, I should totally look for that. Beetle on sticky mats. Totally. Yes. Beetle on has a lot of the accoudements that I don't carry. Um, and so like the wildfire um, burner is like ugh, all that in a bag of Cheerios. Love it. Love it. Love it. Shelf liner. Jeez Louise. Did you like that was a Pictionary type of moment. Like feels like put it in the cabinet. <laughs> All right. Are those books still available? No, no. You have to come. You have to come to the, the museum of jewels. <laughs> yeah, those were great books. I wish I wish I had the rights to them. I don't know who does. To be honest with you, I don't know if Duncan has the rights uh, to those books. I don't know if they were reverted back to the family. I'm going to ask Tiff. I just spent the weekend with her. So I'm going to ask Tiffany about that and we'll see. We'll definitely see. So back to the original jewel loom, um, you've got a really nice, almost three inch wide area to work with, um, just about 11 or so inches long. You can certainly use part of the loom to create a piece, or you can use all of the loom, which let me bring this one in. So this, look at this. This is the entire jewel loom warped with red wildfire is that amazing so i know somebody in the group was working on a correct me if i'm wrong but i do believe it was a a frida pattern and i do believe it was like the entire width I could be long. I was it a jewel loom or was it a small warrior? There, if you're not a part of the free Facebook group, by the way, it's insanely fabulous. Like so top notch. The projects that are designed and created are. I don't even have to say anything. Like I'm just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so join that group because it's crazy good. Yeah. So anyway, so this is, um, you know, you can, you can warp your entire jewel loom and do a really cool piece on it, a seed bead piece. So you don't want to skip any grooves. Um, if you're working with the, uh, small little tiny beads there, love the red against the blue, right? It's such a great visual. Look at that. Right. I could just probably sell these on air. <laughs> Okay. All right. Enough of that. Okay. So let's talk, let's talk about the rod. Now, um, when you're inserting the rod and I'm going to stand up, I did Frida on the original that thank you, girlfriend. I knew it. I'm so sorry. I just was trying to process all the visuals that I see in the group because you can confirm this, right? It's like constantly, constantly amazing stuff. Okay. So I'm going to take the metal rod and this is my belly. Um, it's a little poochy-er 
Tiffany and I ate out all weekend. We did like really good yummy food. <laughs> so I'm going to take the metal rod and I'm going to put it in the bottom hole, swing it forward. And then I just let the jewel loom rest on my belly there. And then I'm going to just very carefully pop in the top rod. Okay. So that's how you insert the rod. If you went to take it out and see, it doesn't want to come out. I'll turn the loom around and pop it out. So don't ever, don't fight with it. Okay. Turn it around, let the tension redistribute itself and it will come out. My favorite loom of all time. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, Tina. Yeah. I did a really, a really cute little TikTok before we went live. I'll share it. It's, it's just precious. Okay. So let me pop it back in for giggles. So I'm going to put the, put it in the bottom and then pop it in the top. Okay. So that's what it should look like when your metal rod is in your loom. So some of the things that you can use, some of the products that you can use to warp with. So if you want to take these notes down, if you have the book, you probably have all of this already in the book. Um, obviously, Wildfire. It's definitely my go-to for beading thread. I love it. Um, I love the color palette of the G1. I hope I'm not getting that wrong, um, but it's expensive. Okay. Wildfire is amazing. Comes in a lot of different colors. I'll be using the black. Um, you could probably use the red if you wanted, but I'm going to be warping with red, uh, black hemp. So I just want that to coordinate. Um, you can use, um, artistic wire. We have, we have warped with artistic wire many, many times, and it is so incredibly delicious. Uh, 26 gauge, 24 gauge. Um, if you're feeling on the wild side, you could try 22 gauge. Uh, it's a little bit thicker. So, you know, you could play around with that. Just make sure that you have your nylon uh, pliers, your nylon jaw pliers, so that you can help massage the wire as it's being warped. Um, but I love warping with, with artistic wire. Um, Trisha turned us on <laughs> to warping with soft flex. And so that has been a whole new thing. Um, and so of course she's going to be doing a segment over, um, on the soft flex channel, by the way, February 15th. And so, um, I will be over there as well, but she is, <laughs> wait to see what she designed. It's like out of the park and she warped and did it with a soft flex. It's over the top, super over the top. Um, another product that I have recently fallen in love with is the repeat from Beetle On. So you can work with that. There are two different thicknesses. I know the repeat is expensive. It is. But um, 20, 20 meters equals seven bracelets at, at like three yards a piece, right? So you know, do the math. It's actually not that expensive if you're going to uh, get a couple colors and make multiple bracelets. So again, 20 millimeters of the one, uh, 1.0 equal, it was like 21.87 yards divided by three, which is most commonly used in a, uh, let's see, in a bracelet like this. So you get seven bracelets and it's sustainable. It's made out of plastic bottles. It's a super cool product and it comes in all these delicious colors. I personally love repeat. Like I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So if you haven't tried it, tried it. I'm going to try to get it in the shop. Um, but yeah, so the repeat is super cool. Let me bring in some alternative kind of, um, material. So here's something that's interesting. We always talk about removing the rod prior to warping. This, um, this loom is warped with leather, real leather. Okay. 
So real leather, and you can see how it has stretched. So let's bring in, let's bring in this one, right? Look at, so what I would say to you is that if you wanted to leave your rod in when you're working with leather, not a deal breaker, you can do that. Especially if you know you're not going to finish your project right away. So like this has been sitting on the loom for quite a while and it's, it's, it might be flatlined next time I pull it out, but I keep it as an example. So again, if you're warping with real leather, it is going to stretch. If you know you're not going to finish your project right away, just take the, leave the rod in because it will help to hold um, the product. And, and so here's an example of, of a faux leather. Okay. So this is not real. And you can see that it didn't stretch. So if you're going to use uh, a product, you know, whether you use real leather or not, some people prefer not to, um, you're not going to have a problem with the faux cord, the faux leather cording. Okay. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show to, well, let me stay focused. Okay. Here's sorry ribbon, sorry ribbon, however you want to enunciate it. And again, you can kind of tell that it's stretching a little bit. It's not going to have as much give as the leather, but it's fabric. So, you know, it's not going to be as tight as the wildfire, but, um, you know, but it, it, it is going to give a little. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be better in the long run for pre-stretching for the real leather? I, um, or if you're referring to pre like stretching out leather, leather scares the bejeebies out of me. Like I, when I'm warping it, I'm so stinking careful not to pull very tight because it'll snap. So is that what you mean? Cause I don't, let me know if that's what you mean. That scares me. I wouldn't, I won't do that because I'll break it and it's too expensive. So let me know, Sarah, if that's what you're thinking. Um, okay. This one is really stinking cool too. So again, I'm just showing you things that you can warp with because that question comes up all the time. And in my mind, it's just kind of like, what do you mean? Can you warp with? Like I, I say, if it ain't moving, it's fair game. <laughs> Seriously. If it ain't moving, it's fair game. Try it. Eslon all the things. Anyway, <laughs> Jules will be. Okay. So this is yarn. All right. And this is a project I made. Oh my gosh. It still has my, my, um, my married name on it. So this was one of the original looms and look at how well, look at how it has kept its warp and its shape. So we're talking at least 10 years old. This has been on the loom, right? So this is all yarn just a simple yarn that I probably picked up like at Michael's and um, I started doing some weaving and then I wove in um, some pretty beads of the rainbow. So isn't that fun? So you can also do some fiber weaving on the original loom. I mean, letting it sit on the loom for a bit to pre-stretch before. Oh, <laughs> that's smart. I got you. All right. That sounds, that sounds interesting. And then rewarp it. Okay. If you try it, let me know. <laughs> but that's smart. That's smart. Cool beans. Okay. What else did I want to show you? I wanted to show you this one. Is it this one? This is another original loom. So the reason why I'm showing you these, um, I'm leading up to it. So this one too has my, my, um, married name on it. So these are, these are the original. So the ones that have Hudgens, um, the, these are the ones that were made originally. And so if you get one these days, it says Avalar, that's my maiden name, but, uh, you could see again, this is a class that I taught at JTV. Okay. And it's been sitting on here since then. And that's quite impressive. And, and even more impressive, what I want to um, talk about is like, there have been people who have snapped their loom, okay, um, 
I can't tell you why it happens. I, it, it, it breaks my heart. Like I literally can't, if you post a picture with a broken loom, I almost throw up. Like I know I'm not full of it. Like it hurts. <laughs> it hurts so bad um, because I don't understand, you know, I'm just like, Oh my God, what happened? You know, to see my baby like dead, right? Like you're like scrolling and then there's your baby in two pieces. Um, and so, you know, I know that it has happened. Um, what I want to say to you is make sure that you get your replacement for free from Beetalon. It's sales at Beetalon.com. You just text them or text them. You email them. You let them know that your jewel loom broke um, and they will replace it for free. So make sure if that's ever happened to you that you please take advantage of that because it sucks when that happens. And I'm so sorry that it happens. I don't know why it happens because I'm showing you looms that have been in their warp position for like 10 plus years. And so I don't know, you know, perhaps I have seen on occasion where I'll, I'll see that. You see how this is like, you've got what you've got like a two inch span right here. I have seen where people have they've really tested the warp and, and, and there might be three inches. So that tells me that they got that bad boy warp so tight, you know, too tight. And then what happens is it probably gives, I don't know. I'm not there. I've not witnessed it. It doesn't even matter. I mean, it does bum me out, but, but the gist of this is get your replacement. Okay. And then just keep practicing and, and don't kill any more of my babies. <laughs> I know you're not. I know it's not intentional. Beelon was great. Yeah. Maria had to get a replacement loom. And so, um, you know, but take a look, take a good look at this because again, this is probably like a, like what, two inches maybe, maybe. Yeah. So if you get done warping your jewel loom and it's almost that the grooves are kissing each other, you have warped way too tight. So that could be a problem. Like, totally a problem because then, you know, like I said earlier, it's flexible, it's not bendable. And so you're really putting a lot of pressure on his little bottom here. And, um, and so, yeah, Joan just posted the customer service phone number, uh, for beetle on again, you can also email them, um, at sales at beetle .com. So, all right. So I think, um, you know, let me show you one more. This is hemp. This is what we're going to be doing next week. We're going to be warping with the hemp. So easy peasy. You can see the distance between the warp and the bottom here of the jewel loom. Again, maybe like two inches. I hope that's a visual that, that will help some of you. Um, because I have heard people say, you know what, maybe I, I warp too tight. So if your loom, you know, is it similar to this or, you know, or this after you warp it, chances are, you know, you've got almost a horseshoe <laughs> and it's too tight. <laughs> so back it up a little there. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to show you? Okay. So some tools, flat nose pliers, if you're going to, um, we're going to be weaving with the wildfire. It always helps to flatten the end of the wildfire so that it'll go through that tiny jewel loom eye. Okay. The wildfire burner. Love this tool. Flipping love, love, love this tool. I'm loving on beetle on today. Scissors. Okay. Robert and Karen gifted me finally a pair of scissors. Not that they finally gifted me because I never went out to buy any for myself. They, they gifted me some for, uh, for the holidays, for Christmas. What is the best distance for crystals? What is the best distance? What do you mean by that? What is the best distance? Let me know what you mean by that. Are you talking about the, the, in the warp? You're going to skip three grooves if you're working with a six millimeter round bead, which we are next week. Okay. So if you're working with the gorgeous Siam six millimeter fire polish that's in this shop on the front page, you're going to warp your loom. You're going to have four warps, warps, and you're going to skip three grooves in between each warp. I hope that's what you meant, Anissa. 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 
you'll have to. Okay. And I'm, ah, Jody. I'm so happy that you got a new, a new goddess loom. Yeah. And it does depend on the size of the bead. And, um, so if you have a smaller bead, the scientific approach is you put the bead up to the grooves and that's how many you skip. I, I mean, is this really the truth of it, right? Like you pick, you, you, if you're going to weave with big old 12 millimeter pyramid beads, all right, you put the pyramid up to the groove. And then you would eyeball it and you would see that you would need to skip seven grooves. So I, I hope that's what you're talking about. And as far as bead goes, beads go, it's kind of like that same, same thing that I said earlier about the warping material. Like if the bead is standing still, grab it. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, my brain doesn't do rules. Like I am in creativity. I just want you to like explore. I want you to have fun. It's not, you know, I'm not a very like, this is, you know, there are some things like, like how you warp and the rod. I'm pretty like, this is how I want you to do it. But, um, warping materials and weaving materials and such. I want you to have fun. How many strands of fire polish do we need for the cuff? Okay. Um, I have a six inch wrist. And so, three strands because we're going to do three strands so that we can we can just call it a day um five strands are gorgeous absolutely gorgeous by the way i think what was it joan i think i had right under half a million hits on my short that i did for the love cuff because i called it the love cuff do you think that the name had anything to do with it going viral <laughs> i do so the five are hot. Bonnie is hot with five. Let me just tell you that. So it just depends. I'm going to weave three so that we can get through it. All right. Because weaving five is a little bit more time consuming. I really want to make this with you. But um, this is five. And so there are three different styles. There's the Siam AB. There's the Siam Luster which is absolutely divine. And there's the Siam. Okay. So each strand has 25 beads for a six inch wrist. One strand works times however many you want to go across. So if you're going to do three, you're going to get three, three strands. But if you have a bigger wrist than like, let's just say six and a half, then you're going to need to get an extra strand to make a longer bracelet. If you're going to go five across, you're probably going to need, um, and you, and you do seven. So five, so like probably eight strands for a bigger, yes, for a bigger wrist. Love the five and the red is gorgeous. It's one of my most favorite. I will layer this with one more bracelet. Like, oh my gosh. I don't have it. Oh, I do have it. Okay. Do you remember this one that we made in class? Look at how stinking gorgeous this is. So I will do this bracelet. And then I will do this bracelet. Look at how gorgeous. Right? Who's got major arm candy right now? So I love that. I love to layer these big chunky ones together. So yes, right? Right? Who's going to mess with me with those on? <laughs> That's my, those are my power bracelets. Oh gosh, now I can't get out of here. Oh, there we go. So yeah, um, I showed you this earlier. This was a bracelet that I made the uh, night that my I found out that my Portuguese grandma had passed away. It absolutely just broke my heart into a thousand pieces. I chose to weave this piece with colors that reminded me of her. Um, they, you know, we were out on a, uh, a ranch 
in between Oxnard and Camarillo, California. So when my father came to this, my father, when my grandfather came to this country, he came to, from the Azores, he came to America first and he, um, he was here for about two years. And then my grandma, my father and my aunt Maria, they came here from the Azores afterwards. And my, my dad was like 12 or 13 years old when he came to this country. And so they lived on all these little ranches out in between Camrio and Oxnard. And my grandfather worked the fields pretty much until the day he died. And, um, and so, and so, yeah. So when my grandma passed away, you know, she was all about the land, you know, she grew everything. They had orchards. Um, they, my grandfather had worked his way up to where we were allowed to live in the main house. You know, it wasn't our, we didn't own it, but <clears throat> the gentleman who owned all of the fields, he let my grandfather and his family live there. And so um, there were, there was everything you can think of. Walnut trees, persimmons, um, orange trees, lemon trees, that, the most amazing avocado tree, tree you've ever seen in your life. My grandmother sewed, she crocheted, she knitted. And so everything about her was what I put into this bracelet. And it literally kept me from losing it. I, I stayed up till like three o'clock in the morning. And so this is actually in the book and the instructions on how to make this are in the book. Um, the one that I show how to make is called Ocean's Delight. It's just a different color palette. And then it shows you how to sew on a really nice box clasp. So, and that for me is really what this is all about. You know, it's really, really, really what this is all about. It's about um, weaving your story. You know, it can be really simple, easy peasy. Hey, I just want to knock a bracelet out of the park and put something on. Or maybe I'm making um, bracelets for my, my booth and I'm, you know, I'm, this is part of how I make my living. Um, but in everything, it's really about this story. And for me, it's more about storytelling um, because there's just so much emotion that seems to come from this beautiful, soulful dance that, you know, going from left to right, you know, and you just kind of get into the rhythm of it. And I love it when I'm teaching a class and, and everybody's like, rah, 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 right. And then we get, we warp and then everyone starts weaving and it's like quiet. Like, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's possible that it can even quiet down ginger. <laughs> it's possible. I don't know, but possible, but yeah. So it's all, you know, it's all storytelling, you know, like the pieces, these are from the book that Tiffany and I did. Um, the brooch is somewhere. I have to go find it. But, you know, this will forever be um, a part of my history, right? A part of my story. You know, this was one of the first books. And all of the all of the beautiful stories from Aline's Creative Living. And, you know, we used to be on set all day taping uh, the show. And then we would all go into the uh, the kitchen and there would be bead boxes everywhere. Just every, anyone who ever was on air or visited Aline's. They know this. You would go in and there'd be fishing tackle boxes everywhere. And they were full of beads and there were looms everywhere um, because that's where I learned how to bead. And uh, and we would sit around and we would make, oh, we would just make tons of these. Joan Fee, Tiffany, Heidi, Lauren, Beth, Carol, you know, the whole crew. We would sit around and we would make these bracelets. And so... Yes, it's meditative, it's prayerful, it's this beautiful story. And so I want you to gather all of your things um, and, you know, just really embrace the original jewel loom, whether you've advanced to one of the wood looms or not. The original jewel loom is always going to be my go-to. It's got a warp like nobody else out there on the market, and um, it's the best. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it's got a patent. I'm going to say it's the best. I don't say it enough. And uh, and it truly is. And I'm forever grateful to my my baby daddies over at Beadalon for uh, and my mamas for helping me get it to market. And, and they've just, uh, you know, they're so good. So I still have, oh my gosh. So Hermie is saying, I still have my loomed bracelet you taught me on Aline's. 
That is amazing. Super, super, super amazing. So I have one more thing to share with you. Um, nobody has seen this yet. But did you all see Neelay's beadboard that I did for him? And, and you all loved it. You've been showing it <clears throat> a lot of love. And I was just like, well, I want one. <laughs> Why, don't I Why don't I have a beadboard? Julia needs a beadboard. Oh, my God. I cannot, like, when Robert showed me this, I just about cried. So I'm going to show you now. Jewel Loom now has its own beadboard. Look at that. Look at the loom and look at the warps that he was able to laser. Is that not amazing? And it's got the tagline, weaving creativity and joy for the soul. So I'm just so stinking excited about this. I want to color in. Where's that at? I want to color in the heart with the blue, but I wanted to show you all first. Isn't that so great? Isn't it? It's so amazing. But look at, can I get a little closer? Maybe I want to, I about died. Look at the warps. Look at the warps on the jewel loom. Is that sick? Oh my God. I just can't even believe it. So, so good. So Patricia, um, how do you pick up beads on that board? I, you know, you put the beads in between the little um, spots and you put your needle down. You know who did a really cute, um, a really nice illustration or demonstration of that was Amber. We should find that one because she did it really cool. So, so the bead board is um, on the website. This, whoops, this right here is the piece of cork where you put your needles right? So you put your needle in here. Look at that. Hold your needle. And Patricia was saying, you know, how does it hold your, your beads? So you see how it's got all the, these are solid, so they're not going to go under. And the little lasered, they look like little polka dots. It kind of helps the beads not to go everywhere. So you just fill your little spots here and then you take your needle and you go, like that and like that. <laughs> but Amber did it. Joan, we should find that. I think it was a, was it a video or a reel? Darn it. Cause it was so good. It was just so beautiful to watch her do that. Yeah. I'll have to ask. Um, Amber has used the shield uh, bead board quite often. We have to find that, that video and share it with you all. But Joan says she's looking for it. But anyway, that's in the shop. I'm super stoked about it. The jewel loomers needed their own bead board. So, so now, so now if you're a silky and a loomer, you'll have your, you'll have your, uh, your bead board. It's like a Chinese checkerboard for beads. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I forgot about those. That's so funny. Okay. Um, the other thing too, uh, a lot of you have asked me to let you know the Jewel Loom starter kits, they're back in stock. Um, and so those have been out since December. Um, and what that is, is the original Jewel Loom, the baby Jewel Loom, a pack of the needles. Um, I'm putting three yards of hemp in there. You get a wood button. Every time I think of a wood button, now I'm going to think of, uh, was it Debbie or Sarah said? Something other than a wood button. I'm sorry. I love wood buttons. And a hundred beads. Now the beads are going to vary. Right now they look like this. They're gorgeous blue speckle beads. All right. But when I run out of that, there's something else because it's a starter kit. All right. It's not necessarily like a specific look. Um, I want to give you the things that you need to get started. Right. So you'll the only thing you'll need is your your beading thread. Okay. But you're going to have a hundred beads, three yards of hemp, a button, an original jewel loom, a baby jewel loom, and a six pack of needles. And those are back in stock. Okay. So again, I just wanted to get through all of this stuff, you know, all the things so that next Thursday we can warp our loom and we can start making our bracelet together. 
And, um, and I know that I've had a request to show how to add thread to your finished piece or not your finished piece, your piece in progress and how to finish. And so let's tackle those on the last Thursday. We'll, we can, we can talk about those things. So I will get prepared for the, that presentation specifically for those questions, but let's see. I'm just going to scroll back through here. Yes. I love the board. I'm about to, I'm serious. I cried. Like when I opened up the box from Robert, I was like, you have to flip and be kidding me. Like, I just can't look at the, I'm serious. Can you even believe that he got the warps on there? You got And the loom, that's the loom. These stripes right here are the, are the warps. I mean, it's insane. It's just insane. I can't even believe that he was able to do that. He's so good. But I did think that it would be really pretty to find like a blue. I don't know yet what I'm going to do. Like if I'm going to use a colored pencil or I probably will use a colored pencil. I mean, you can use an acrylic paint. You don't ever want to use like a really water-based paint because the Baltic birch is not going to be happy. Um, which by the way, all the this is sustainable Baltic birch made here in the USA by another small family business. And so we love it when you support us because um, we're doing everything right now <laughs> to like not lose our Cheerios. Oh my God, is everything so crazy? Who's got chickens, by the way? <laughs> Who's got chickens? Listen, on all the serious side, if you do have chickens, if you've not started to make your own feed, <laughs> I hear that's the secret. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, too funny. Like my girlfriend's finally getting an egg a day. I'm like, and I don't like eggs. I'm not an egg eater. They gross me out. So, but for all you egg lovers, I feel you. I see you. Oh, good. Lots of information. Don't forget to either decorate your beadboard or wax it. Joan did a video. I don't know if you can find that. Joan did a video on waxing your um, wood products. And so I think I see her, her little fingers are going right now. She's looking, she's looking for that to uh, share with you. And so, so make sure you watch that. Somebody had asked me, um, I sent a, by the way, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do so. Um, would greatly appreciate that. Um, thumbs up you know, hearts, I don't know, whatever it is that you're supposed to do on the YouTubes. I would appreciate it. And um, if you're not on the newsletter, get on the newsletter because you get a 15% off code. Okay. And if the, co the code, like you sign up and there's the code. All right. If the code doesn't present itself, just let me know, put your order in, what have you, or I'll just go make one up for you. Um, I'm good with that. And so Jean says, I have a bracelet on my jewel loom and need help getting it off the loom and a clasp. Okay. So when you say you need help getting off the loom, um, what I would do, this is scrolling really fast, Jean, maybe just one of the awareness cuff videos, Joan, that we should be able to get the link for her on that. Or Jean, if you, you're on the YouTubes right now. So if you go to the playlist and you look under the Awareness Cuff video series. It's a 12-part series. So all the videos are in nuggets, small nuggets of, you know, content. There is one, removing the loom, removing your piece from the loom. Joan, I, she might be looking for it right now. Hi, Stephanie. Do I tie on right or left? So... It does, I think in the original instructions, what we were saying, Anise, is that, Anissa, is that we would, I mean, first of all, you're tying off on the back button. So you tie on the back button and then you come up and over. Again, for any of you that are anxious to start warping, I appreciate you. I respect that. Um, go look at the Awareness Cuff video series. And I think that Joan, is that easy enough to find Joan? 
Joan's looking for it right now. Everything in that is like 12, 12 segments. How to get started, how to put your rod in, how to warp, how to, how to, like 12. And they're all in little nuggets of like maybe 10 minutes. Joan's looking for that video series, that playlist right now. And we're hopefully going to be able to, um, to do that. So love on the YouTube channel, sign up for my newsletter. I would greatly appreciate that. Um, make sure to, uh, support Trisha. Trisha's over at pink poodle. And, um, I think that here on the YouTubes, if you put her name in, I could be wrong, but Joan will correct me. Um, you can, you can follow her as well because she's an all around designer art, right? Like she's got like a plethora of talents. And so, uh, definitely give her some love. My goal is to help her get to her thousand this year because you need a thousand subscribers in order to like go to the next level on the YouTubes. And so, um, so do that so we can help, we can help her out. I took a class from Katie at the customer experience. I loved working with the loom. I've had it for years and just didn't try using it. Okay. Well now, now you're in Stephanie. Awesome. Okay. So there it is awareness. Yeah. <clears throat> so Joan just posted, um, the link for the awareness cuff videos. Again, it's like I produced it years ago, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I look all proper. My hair is up. Um, but it's good. Like it's so good. Like I, I seriously had like over a million dollars of equipment that this young guy from the college used to be able to help me. And that's where he worked on the weekends was like a rental place for all of the cameras. And he like showed up with honest to God over a million dollars in equipment that's probably one of the best shot <laughs> videos. I got so spoiled, but, um, yeah, there we go. Trisha's pink poodle studio on the YouTube. So make sure to, to help her out. Um, and, uh, we want to send her a lot of love over there. Gonna try. I try to show appreciation. Thank you, sweetheart. I love that. All right. So again, next Thursday, we're going to warp our loom. We're going to add the thread to the warps. We're going to add our beads and, um, and yeah, so it'll be, a, it'll be a fun project and, uh, easy peasy for those who are just starting out. And in the meantime, text me, if you could put the text up there, the right text, <laughs> I made a little boo-boo last night. <sighs> Kind of gave out the wrong phone number. <laughs> Trisha did a very cool bit. Yeah, I saw that it was stinking cool. Okay, there's a text. Different ways to end your piece, adding more thread. And if you have any other questions, text me so that I can prep for that. Because a lot of your things just came in before I went on air. What beads should we use? Um... I'm going to be using six millimeter fire polish cyan beads from the shop. Okay. So if you have six millimeter beads already on hand, that's what I'm going to be using. Okay. Awesome. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Let me just look at my coup de moans. I think we talked about everything. Yep. Easy peasy pumpkin squeezy. So I will, I will be on the lookout for all of your yummies, all your questions. And, um, we will gather back here next Thursday and, um, just a little heads up in case you want to know, if you'd like to know things in advance, the month of March is going to be all about the small sun weaver. So last month, Trisha focused on the large sun weaver that one <laughs> right there. <laughs> I'm going to tickle her belly. <laughs> so we're going to be doing the small one, which is next to her. Where's she at? Right there. There's a small one. Okay. And so what's really cool is we are going to have four 
very well known, including Trisha, designers um, come on every Thursday. And the month of March is going to be about storytelling, um, female empowerment, go girl, um, what word do I want to use? All right. I'm all right with using survivor of things, um, healer of things. So it's going to be all about that and the small sun weaver. And it's not necessarily going to be projects that are stepped out because remember the sun weaver, I really want you to embrace <clears throat> and I want you to tell your story with that loom. And so you're going to hear from four different amazing women every Thursday in March. I'm going to start it off on the first Thursday. Trish is going to join me on the second one. And then we've got three other amazing women who I know are just, you're going to love. You're going to love. And um, so that's March. First part of April is going to be all about my baby daddy and the silver silk. So not only am I going to be on with Neele um, on his channel, but we're going to give the Silver Silk Loom love uh, prior to me departing for the Czech Republic. So in case you want to know, tickle your calendar so that you know what's coming up with the Jewel Loom community. And uh, yeah, so yeah, my baby daddy. <laughs> I think I kind of mentioned that I had like a few. I got the beetle on baby daddies. <laughs> I got Neela. Yes, my baby daddy. I think Sam kind of maybe might be a baby daddy. I don't know. <laughs> and of course, these are all products, not children. <laughs> I have one. I have one child. My Josh. All right. I love you guys. Thank you for like hanging out. And uh, I'm sorry. This looks like it almost went an hour. I can't. I'm just, I know I'm bad. I talk. But you know, my third grade teacher said Juliana would do a lot better in school if she would just like stop talking, specifically stop talking to the boys. Excuse me. <laughs> she didn't even know. <laughs> God bless her. All right. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you. And we'll see you next week.